Coming to you live from my apartment, it's Rob has a podcast. And now, here's the guy who's about to preview the Survivor Kagayan uh, with one more time with the bloggers of RHAP. It's Rob Sestrino. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our very special show tonight. We have a roundtable panel joining us of the people that will be blogging about this season all season long on robhasawebsite.com. We're very lucky. We have some of the brightest Survivor minds out there here all gathered in one place. So let me introduce you to everybody, and then I'll tell you guys how you're going to interact with the show, and it's going to be a lot of fun here over the next hour or so. Uh, let's start here uh, with, I believe, our... our uh, senior staff writer here on robhasawebsite.com. Uh, here she is. She writes the Individual Games blog. Here she is, Sarah Freeman. Sarah, how are you? I'm fine. How are you doing, Rob? Sarah, would you prefer I say I said most tenured writer on Rob has a website? Uh, yeah, that sounds good. That's something I'll put on my gravestone. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, also with us here tonight... Uh, is a guy, he came on last season, he does uh, one hell of a job, and he has a very twisted brain that uh, has writes about all sorts of pop culture and YouTube stuff. Uh, here he is, here is Scott Gallagher. Scott, how are you? Good, how you doing, Rob? Thanks for having me. Uh, very excited to uh, to have you here with us. Uh, I'm trying to do like a, a Rorschach test with that painting behind you. Uh, oh, yeah, you know what, I'm at, uh, I'm staying at, uh, at like my mom's right now, so I have no idea what that is, but... Uh... Yeah, but it makes me feel happy. So. All right, well, tell us Where in the go? comments tonight, uh, as, as people are watching, what you think that painting is uh, behind <laughs> Scott. Uh, all right, and now uh, our next panelist tonight is a guy you, uh, you know very well if you've been following Survivor on Rob as a Podcast or our Walking Dead recaps here and now on Post Show Recaps. Here is uh, Mr. Josh Wiggler. Josh, how are you? I'm tired. I'm very yeah. tired. <laughs> Josh, uh, why are you so tired? Uh, I, I just flew... Uh, here from Singapore earlier this morning and literally landed and got on the podcast. So apologies in advance, everybody. This is going to be awkward. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your commitment. No, I, I wouldn't miss it for the world. Okay. Well, fantastic. Happy to have you here back with us in the United States. And I want to introduce you guys to a new person tonight joining the RHAP blog team. Here he is making his first appearance ever here on Rob as a Podcast. It's Mr. Dan Heaton. Dan, how are you? I'm good, Rob. I'm excited to talk about the new season and write very long posts about Survivor. So. Good. And, and what, what specific angle will you be covering on the RHAP beat? Um, I think it'll, I really dig into the strategy and whether decisions are good or not. Kind of like a poor man's Sarah Freeman, I think. Oh. I don't know. Um, <laughs> so I don't think I'll be writing the 5,000 word essays, but just kind of um, whether they made the right decisions and really digging into what their end game is and if it's good long term or short term and looking back at the history of the show. So Okay. Well, that's going to be a lot of fun. We are have our currently on our website, on robswebsite.com, we have a 15,000 word uh, tome that the bloggers have written. They previewed this, se uh, this season from top to bottom, every single thing. You could read that. It's on the, uh, it's on the lower half of the homepage on robhasawebsite.com. Uh, and, of course, uh, Michael Trudeau and Nick Mayorano, they are also part of the uh, Survivor blog team. They can't join us tonight, but they're also going to be blogging this season. So we should have pretty much a Survivor blog for you guys up just about every day of the week, all season long for the next two and a half months. So very exciting, very busy time here on Rob as a Podcast. Okay? All right, so let me explain a little bit of how this is going to work. We are going to uh, have our bloggers... Tell us a little bit about what's going to happen this season to get another perspective besides my, my own, besides Nicole's, besides Corinne's. Uh, we're going to talk about, through all of this, and then we want to hear from you guys as well. Uh, we ha have the chat room going on robberswebsite.com, plus use the hashtag RHAP on Twitter. Scott St. Pierre is monitoring all of that. He's going to post some questions up on the screen. And then, of course, uh, on our YouTube channel, you can post the comments as well, and we'll take those there at robberswebsite.com. Slash YouTube, and let me just take a comment just to get this get the ball rolling here. Uh, this is oh, it's from it's from Josh Wiggler, and he says I flew all the way around the world today just to make the RHAP Blogger Survivor Preview Podcast. Uh, it's great. So that is uh, it's a Josh true thing. Is, it's a true story. It's the only reason I came back. I would have stayed there forever otherwise. <laughs> you you would have stayed. I uh, hope not. Please. Such devotion. Such probably devotion. probably against my will. All right. Well, let's go ahead. Let's dive in, and I want to hear you guys break down 
all of the uh, the three tribes and along the way. We'll talk more about the revelations this week that came out of the TV Guide special about how the game is going to begin. Actually, let me reset that because that's kind of new information. If you didn't listen to the Corinne podcast, we talked about that. So in the TV Guide special that was on TVGN, which is a fine network, they uh, Jeff Prof said the game is going to start and basically they're going to bring the three tribes in and what's going to happen is that each of the tribe has to elect a leader and then the person who is the leader is going to pick the person that they think is the weakest and then the person who is the weakest for each of the three tribes is going to get on a helicopter and go back to the camp and when they get back to the camp they're going to have to decide whether they should either get a clue to the hidden immunity idol or an extra bag of rice for the tribe. So that's one development that we learned on the TBGN special. And the second of these new developments is that Jeff Probst got a text from Tyler Perry. <laughs> yes, that sounds, sounds like the start of a jo- of a like a late night monologue joke. Uh, so did you hear about this? Jeff Probst <laughs> got a phone call. We got a text message from Tyler Perry. Um, so Medea's idol is going to be in play this season. Yeah. And Medea's idol is uh, very similar to Yule Kwan's idol, where you can play it after the votes are read at Tribal Council. So we are going to actually have a throwback. I don't know if Tyler Perry knew about the original way that the idol was being used on uh, Survivor, th- Survivor th- uh, t- was it 12 and 13? Uh, yeah. Survivor uh, 12 and 13. Yeah. yeah. So the idol after the merge will now have some superpowers to it. That's stupid. So yes. Yeah. All right, you guys want to talk about the idols. Let's let's talk about uh, the the idol and tell me, do you think is um, is this a as bad as it sounds? I think so. I think that there was a very legitimate reason for why it changed, which is that it was a super powered idol that was too powerful, and and uh, it, you were unable to vote off anybody who had it, pretty much, unless you wanted to take a monstrous risk, which I couldn't blame anyone for not wanting to take. So if somebody has the idol after the merge. That person's making it to the final episode. Full stop. There's nothing to be done about it. And if that player is somebody who isn't compelling or deserving, that's going to be really disappointing. And this is, I would say, the first really big bombshell of bad news that I've heard about this season. Yeah, one thing I wanted to know is, uh, as I understand it, but I might, I might have faulty memory here, back in Cook Islands, they were not allowed to give the idol away at Tribal Council. Or as of course these days they're giving away the tri- the idol at tribal council left and right. So is that going to be the same again? Because you can't have somebody having the idol and the minute anybody key to them gets voted out, they go, oh wait, hang on, here's this, take this and play it. Because then it just becomes even more ridiculously powerful, more so than yours. Right. So have they are they going to are they going to have that rule change in effect or not? No uh, word on just, that in the TV Guide special. Yeah, I just, I just don't like this idea. I, I'm happy. Well, I'd rather get rid of the idol altogether if they were going to change it up. <clears throat> it's sad because this seemed like this was going to be more of a pure season, you know, with um, mm-hmm. no Redemption Island and no returning players. And maybe it'll work out and have some great drama, but plus having it after the merge, it almost seems worse because then it's even more powerful for the end game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I, I agree with that, and that's coming from somebody who says Exile Island is one of my favorite seasons. I really like Cook Islands. I love Yule. Um, but I think that if you look back on Survivor history, that idol seems like a mistake. Uh, you know, every idol ever since then has played by the rules that it's played by since Fiji and onward. Uh, And to go back in time and change things so drastically, I I don't understand the logic. I mean, Tyler Perry, I guess he's cool, but why is he influencing survivor policy? I'll I'll never be able to say. It seems Uh, like a long a long way to go for a name drop for Jeff Probst. Yeah, I mean, that's all this is. But but, (laughs) Um, yeah. Do you think that it's a two-way street? Do you think that Jeff Probst gets to call up Tyler Perry? He's like, uh, hey, TP, guess what? Uh, it's it's Probst. Hey, uh, so I've got an idea. So how about uh, Medea goes into the army? That's the next one. What do you think? Get back to me, all right? Uh, I mean, if, if it results in Medea showing up on a season of Survivor, I might be on board. I don't think that will happen. Could um, Medea show up as a loved one? That would be great. I would watch that. As Tyler Perry's loved one? 
Yeah. Well, do you think that kind of like the Jack and Jill challenge, do you think we'll go back to the, an era where, okay, the, the, you want to know what you're playing for? It's, uh, you know, it's Medea goes to medical school. Uh, that's what we're going to watch. You're going to have candy, popcorn, all the fix-ins. All right, it, worth playing for? It feels like there's going to be some sort of Tyler Perry reward challenge. I think we've, we've got a spoiler on our hands here. <laughs> I think uh. so. Yeah. All right. Uh, so... Let's go through the tribe by tribe, and uh, I want to get the sense from you guys where we're going to start off. And uh, Sarah, let me start with you. Uh, which yeah. of the three tribes do you feel like you have the best read on? Uh, Braun. Braun. Okay, let's start there. So tell me, give me a little bit of a sense of what you think is going to happen in the Braun tribe, and then we'll go to the guys to uh, either rebuttal or back up what you're saying. Okay, my, my thing with the Braun tribe is that... Um, You've got these three 29-year-olds on it, and 29 is obviously it's a good survivor age. You're not as young as the fresh-out-of-college girls on the beauty tribe, um, but you're still young enough to handle all the thing. And the other thing about the Braun tribe is that it's like the Nicaragua setup with the old versus young. And in that season, the old people just didn't trust each other, whereas the young people stuck together, either from naivety or from whatever. Um, so I think we're going to see the, those three 29-year-olds. I know everybody disagrees with me on Lindsay, but I think Can we're going to see... tell us who the 29-year-olds are? Sarah, Lindsay, and Wu, I think, are going to be like a, a core alliance here that's going to go far. And the question is, which of the older people in the brawn ones they're going to pick up? Um, I know everybody else thinks Lindsay's going to be the outside in the first one out, but I, I just disagree on that. I think Lindsay's got more groundedness to her that she can enter. Well, you need four people in the group of six. Who's the fourth person with them? That's what I'm trying to figure out. You know, is it going to be Trish or Cliff or Tony? Um, obviously, Tony's a cop, so he could have an in there with Sarah, and he's also got a young daughter, which... Lindsay has as well, so that he's got some common ground. I'm sort of leaning it towards him, him being him, especially since he's the great Philip-style figurehead leader type. But, okay. yeah, it could be either of the other cases, seeing how it plays out. All right, so Scott, Josh, or Dan, uh, do, you guys, uh, have, do you guys have any differing opinions on how the Braun tribe is going to play out? I'll jump in here. I think that uh, Uncle Cliffy... Uh, Cliff Robinson is um, is gonna do better than people expect. I think he's gonna be uh, more chill, if you will, and I think he's gonna. I don't think he's gonna start like any drama. I think he'll go with the flow, and I think he'll be um, someone who will who will try to make a good um, a run at this thing. So I'm kind of high on Uncle Cliffy. Do you feel? Oh, go ahead, Josh. I don't know. I don't. I don't think that uh, Cliff is going to have an attitude problem, and I. I don't question that he wants to be there, and I don't think it's just because he's hurting on money. Even though he says the million is what he's there for, um, I think that he's there for the adventure, like a lot of the other athletes who've played Survivor. But I am concerned, and I think in one of the past podcasts you raised this, Rob, is is the height issue. Uh, he's he's a big boy. Uh, he's going to need a lot of food. Uh, he's going to have trouble fitting in that shelter. He's going to have trouble. Uh, you know, wheeling and dealing around some of these challenges that are really tight, you know, kind of claustrophobic challenges. Um, and I don't know that he's my first pick for the first person out of Braun, but he would probably be my second. I, I think that uh, when it comes to Uncle Cliffy, it's going to be more of a Jimmy Johnson than a Jeff Kent situation, out early. Wow. Yeah, I, I, do, I agree with the, I think the lessons learned from Mitchell in Australia. I just don't think he's going to find the energy he needs out there. So, Josh, do you feel like, uh, are you buying into what Sarah is selling, that Sarah, Lindsay, Wu, and Tony are the four? Um, I think that, well, in her interview, Sarah was talking about how she wants to find, you know, her Malcolm, so to speak. You know, she wants to be a pair. Uh, I think that's very smart. Uh, I think Tony, just on the occupational uh, commonality, I think that that is going to be an easy thing for her to do. I don't know if that personality clash is going to come up. Uh, it seems like they kind of come from, uh, you know, the police, different ends of the police spectrum, good cop, bad cop. Um, and there might be better people on her tribe for her to align with. Um, but I think that whatever happens, I do think Sarah's going to be at the core of it. 
I expect Tony will, will at least be at the core of it for a little while. I feel good about Trish. I feel good about Wu uh, for, for the short going. Uh, and Lindsay, I think, is in trouble. I think Lindsay's first out. Dan, tell me, who gets elected the leader of this tribe on day one? I, th I think it's going to be Uncle Cliffy because I, I don't mean that that means he's going to have a superpower role, but I think they're going to have to make a decision so quickly, and they're going to look to the six foot ten guy who they're going to turn around and say, well, that's an easy pick. You know, I mean, I could see somebody maybe like Tony wanting to jump in, but I think Cliffy's going to be the leader. And, and going on, I think he'll do okay. I think Trish is going to be the person, though, that he's they're probably going to pick her as the weakest, fair or not. And I don't know. I think with that group, like Sarah said, she's the one who's going to be ostracized, and I think she's more likely to go out than Lindsay right up front because that Cliffy will get the leadership role for a few episodes, but I compare it more almost to like Shamar, like we've heard, is that big guy, he's going to have a better attitude, but I also think he's going to wear out by about seven to ten days. Do you guys agree with that? You think that Lindsay will, uh, I'm sorry, uh, that um, Trish will get picked to be the weakest and sent uh, to the camp by herself? I thought it might be Sarah. Oh, you she thought looks, Sarah? Yeah, she looks to be the think... smallest, and she looks as if she might have put on a bit of weight for the show, which I hope I'm right, I'm not, I'm not insulting her here. <laughs> but she doesn't have, she doesn't seem to have the same sort of definition as some of the other brawn people on the tribe. So I wonder if just from appearances they might pick her. I'm sure she is very fit. She's on the Braun tribe, but I did wonder if she might get picked on as the, we the weakest link. Interesting. What's, what's better, to be the strongest beauty or the weakest brawn? What's better? Like for their... Like, <laughs> weakest <their> brawn. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, even if you're the weakest brawn, you still say, hey, well, at least I'm still brawn. I, yeah. I might be the weakest <laughs> yeah. brawn, but I'm still on the brawn tribe. Plus, they have a ton of strong people. They don't need to eliminate the weak links. <laughs> yeah. So... All right, let's take a couple of questions here. Uh, let's go to uh, Nathan. Who say, he's, Nathan's mad about the immunity idol. He says, it feels like we're taking 10 <laughs> steps back by going back to this old version of the idol. I do feel like we've sort of like, you know, the game has evolution, and then it's sort of like, uh, like if the NFL says, you know what, look, we're going to take the goalposts and move them back into the end zone. Uh, we're going to try this. Uh, Tyler Perry called. He says, let's give this a shot. And it's like, well, you know, you did that for a reason. There were, that was a good idea. Why are we undoing things? Yeah, I think the only thing that I could possibly say in its defense is how squeamish everybody was of Blood vs. Water before Blood vs. Water began, and it ended up being really great. Maybe this will be really great. It seems really stupid on paper. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I guess I'll wait and see, but I'm very unexcited about it. Yes, do we yeah. owe the show the benefit of the doubt after Blood vs. Water? <laughs> I don't know about <laughs> owing anything, but I'll, I'll give yeah. it the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> okay. Um, who do we think is the player in this tribe, in the Braun tribe, that is going to have the best chance here? Well, I hope Sarah. She's my pick to win. Sarah. See, that was my Sarah. pick also. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I picked Sarah too, so... But only for the name, but yeah. <laughs> Dan, how about, how about I, I, I've been convinced. I wasn't that high on Sarah at the start, but when I look at this tribe, I don't really see anyone else that's like, I mean, I'm not going to, I don't think Wu is going to be the amazing star. And Tony, I think he's going to overthink his game. I think yeah. Sarah's probably the strongest player. Wait, yeah. so we yeah. all agree Sarah I don't is... agree with Sarah. I okay. Think, yeah, Good. I think Sarah has a, uh, and again, this is just um, from her um, clip I saw, but has a semi-psychotic like look in her eye, like a little bit like Rebecca De Mornay, Hand That Rocks the Cradle, a little like, you know, like something off about her. So my pick on the Braun tribe, I'm thinking, and that tribe seems as if it's like the most wide open, but I got to say, I think that um, Tony as a dark horse like might have a chance because he'll be so like dominant like early on, I think. All right, what do you guys think? Is Tony a dark horse? Are we sleeping on Tony? Tony can't win. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's going to be a great character. I think he'll probably get reasonably far, but I don't think he's got the self-awareness to win. Let's put it that way. Yeah, I think he's going to play too hard. I think he's going to make waves in his tribe and make an alliance and feel great, and then there's going to be a tribe swap, and he's going to be in trouble. Scott, yeah. sell us on Tony. 
Well, hopefully he watched uh, Brad Culpepper from last season and won't make the same type of mistakes. Well, maybe try to play it a little more uh, subtle is the hope. I but they saw it. Yeah, the, no. the, this season was filmed uh, before Blood yeah. vs. Water aired. So it was filmed after Blood vs. Water, but before it aired. So he definitely did not see Brad Culpepper play uh, before he played Survivor. Well, I kind maybe... of get the, um, the vibe of, of Joel from Micronesia. You know, somebody who's this big, tough guy who, who really wants to get his hands on the strategy of the game very, very early on. And you kind of need to in the six-person format, I guess. Uh, but I think that he's going to overplay it. Uh, and I can see him going out pre-merge for sure. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. All right, let's move on to another tribe. Okay, uh, let's go to uh, Scott. I'll let you kick this one off. Uh, where do you okay. want to go? You want to go to brains, or you want to go to uh, beauty? <laughs> let's go to the beauty. Okay. Do you feel like you have a good handle on what's going to happen in the beauty tribe? I feel like I would like to have a good handle on... Whoa, Morgan. take it easy. <laughs> <It's not> easy. <laughs> um, I think that the Beauty Tribe, I think that LJ look, will be the clear uh, clear leader, kind of almost by default. Uh, he looks like he's the oldest on this team, and uh, he seems like the most calm, like a good head on his shoulder, so I think LJ is... Uh, to be the one on that try that you know to watch out for. Okay, so uh, you like LJ? Is oh, do we have another consensus here? Is this going to be a boring show? Do we all agree about the same people? <laughs> um, LJ, Alexis as the dark horse. All right, but but oh, not, everybody not else. Not the leader, but for. Hmm. So is LJ the leader? And is there even a question about this? I don't think no. there's a question about that. I think no. LJ gets the leadership role pretty handily. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. I picked okay. him to win, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we we all we we all like Sarah except for Scott. We all really like LJ, um, and I think that all five of us do. Well, um, I'm not, I wouldn't say that I that I necessarily think LJ is going to do well. Uh, I I like LJ a lot. I like his his potential for for going deep into the game. Um, but I think that some scenarios exist where he might do poorly. Uh, right, I think, think that there. Scenario. Yeah, I think that there's been, you know, talk about if the three girls team up, if Bryce gets in there, then Jeremiah and LJ are not going to be on the favorable end of that deal, uh, especially if LJ puts himself or is put in the leadership position. I think Jeremiah would go before him, but I think that LJ would be next to go. Um, whenever the inevitable tribe shakeups happen, uh, when, when there's a switch or if one of the, the teams collapses a la Matt Singh and gets folded into the other two, um, I don't know that anybody sees too much value in keeping a guy like LJ along when he's clearly a threat. Um, so the problem for LJ, I think, is that he, at least to me, just on looks, seems like somebody who's going to be a big threat to win the game. And if I'm on, on his tribe in the early part of the game, I want him around because I think he'll be helpful to win the challenges. But if I'm opposed against him uh, pretty much anywhere after four uh, people have gone home, I'm, I'm pretty ready to take him out. So uh, I, I like him as a character. I hope he does well, but I'm not convinced that he will. Sarah, I want to go to you because we've talked a lot about this in the preview that Nicole and I did and then again with Corinne in the preview we did earlier this week. There's these three 21-year-olds on the Beauty Tribe. Do you think that these three women, if they've decided, hey, let's stick together, they could control this group? Do you feel like the three 21-year-olds will work together, or do you think they will all go scrambling in different directions? Uh, I think they will work together, but they won't be controlled in the group. I could see a Redemption Island scenario where you've got like Natalie Tanarelli, Ashley Underwood, and Andrea Belke. They could fall into that category where they just sort of hang together and are friends, and, but let somebody else make the decisions for them, effectively. So I think they... They could potentially be a great voting block, and if LJ can step into the Boston Rob shoes, which I don't think Bryce or Jeremiah could, so LJ is the potential to make use of them. But um, otherwise, I, I don't know. I could also see them fracturing, but I, I don't think they'll be taking control. So what about Bryce in all this? What's his place? Is he the one who ends up uh, being the odd man out? I think so, but... 
I mean, either he manages to get the girls in and he's fine, or the whole outdoorsy side of the tribe takes over and Bryce is in trouble. I don't think that young girls, you know, like can um, get along in um, groups of three. I think that's just science. I think that there's going to be uh, some sort of some sort of like a fracture there. So I like um, a Bryce's chances more than saying that the three young girls are going to stick together. I I think he has a chance, but I think that Morgan. I don't know. I could see Jeffra. Um, working together, possibly with Jeremiah, and then if that becomes a pair, then maybe one of the girls and Bryce joins, and that could put LJ in trouble. But I don't know. Morgan just seems like she's going to be such a fish out of water that she's going to... I hate to be to stereotype, but she's going to find some guy to grab onto. Yeah, I, I'm with Dan. Uh, I said it in the in the write-up that we all contributed to, that I, I think her best shot is at Miss Survivor 2015. I think she's <laughs> out of the running for this race. Uh, if I gun to my head who goes home first on Wednesday night, I think Morgan gets my vote. Wow. Uh, paint the scenario for me where Bryce ends up going far in this game. I think if he does like a Colton and he uh, and you know like he's able just to like play like a cunning sly game, um, turning um, the people against each other, you know, um, creating um, a paranoia. I think that's how he does it. I, he, yeah. seems, he also seems really, I don't know, to me, he seems really likable. He seems really yeah. funny. If I, was, if I was on the beach with, with Bryce, I think initially I would be a little wary of him just because I feel like maybe they were casting towards the Colton devious type. Uh, but I think after reading his interviews and, and watching his interviews, I really like the guy. And I think that you know it's very possible that everyone else is going to feel the same way and that he might be able to buy himself some time just on the fact that He's fun to be around. Um, you know, he has to be able to contribute to camp. He has to be able to contribute in challenges. I think if he really falls down on his face in that first challenge, I think that's bad. But if he proves people wrong, if he shuts people up with his actions, I think he can stick around for a bit. I hope so. I mean, maybe if Morgan goes out early, he can sort of fill um, the best friend of Alexis or whatever. <laughs> it, would be a, it would be a real crime if he, if he went first. I feel like we as an audience would really be robbed. Yeah, yeah I think so. But it, we'd be robbed if Morgan goes out first, too. I would yeah. make... <laughs> I agree with you, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm happy for... Um, I'm sure Morgan's a lovely person. But yes. I, I have no interest in seeing her on my screen for a long time. Sorry. Uh, How dare you? Here, so let me ask you guys this question from Brendan Fitzpatrick. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, we switched it. Uh, I like Sarah and Wu. Uh, that wasn't the question that I thought we were going to ask. <laughs> uh, it was gonna, the question that I want. That, uh, I was thought that, was up. It's hashtag Wu. Wu. Uh, Are we hashtagging Wu this season? I think I'm so. Him. I think you could. So the question I was going to ask you was, uh, do you think that one of these tribes will be Matt Singh? And I think, I believe the Beauty Tribe has the best chance to be the Matt Singh of these three tribes. Do you guys see the Beauty Tribe just getting totally decimated in the early going? I don't know about total decimation, but if it is going to happen, I would put it on Beauty. Uh, I, I, think, I think that it will be spread out a little more than it was in Philippines, but if it is going to happen, I think Beauty is the one that I'd be worried about. It seems too obvious for it to be beauty. I have yeah. to think, it's going to be brains or something. Brains right. are going to be completely incapable of doing the puzzles at the end of the challenge or something ironic like that, you know. <laughs> yeah, I have a weird feeling that Braun is going to lose the first challenge. No. It's going to be like, it's going to be like the Amazon like or Vanuatu where they kept showing the guys being all pumped <laughs> up and then they fell off the balance beam, you know. it's. <laughs> I could, and I could, I don't think it's going to happen, but one of those first two challenges, they're going to finish last. I have a weird I feeling. So. I agree um, with that. I think. I think that. I don't think that it'll be beauty, 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 beauty at Tribal Council. I think I it's going to be. It's going to shake up a little bit, and I could see. I agree with you, Dan. I could see like beauty brawn happening in that first episode. Jeff will be besides himself if that happens. Like brawn curious. tribe is uh, is not going anywhere. Yeah. Um, <laughs> What oh, are the no. odds that he calls the Braun tribe the heroes at some point? The heroes are yeah. struggling. <laughs> Robinson. Yeah. yeah. I'm uh, just hoping Sarah holds up the whole tribe in a chant sometime so I can hear Jeff saying, Sarah, really holding everybody up. It'll be just like I'm on Survivor. <laughs> oh. <laughs> gonna say. We'll see how Sarah is holding up on Survivor. We'll see how that goes. Um, so... Uh, did we talk about... Okay, who's the person that we think has the best... Oh, LJ. We're, we're all on board with LJ. Yep. 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I like right. Jeffra. No one else seems to like Jeffra. Jeffra's Chelsea to me. Nice, but no, nah, not gonna get anywhere. But you know. But could go could go far in the game. I think oh, yeah. I don't I don't think that we'll see Jeffra as one of the first boots. I think Jeffra makes the merge. Here, oh, yeah. Dixon has something to say about Jeffra. Uh, he, he says, uh, I think it's funny that Jeffra is the oldest woman on her tribe at age 22. Uh, and Brendan Fitzpatrick says uh, <laughs> she's the tribe cougar. Oh, wow. Is that really how it shakes out age-wise? It's, it's all the women are that young? Yeah, don't yeah. get me started. Wow. <laughs> why does that, why, that makes you mad? Because the beauty tribe is all young women? The fact that the oldest woman in the beauty tribe is 22. No, you know, come on. <laughs> Well, I, w I wish they'd put Trish on the beauty tribe or something, just to say, give us some hope. You know, it doesn't end at 22. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, I don't know. It feels like they were cast as fodder. It just kind of feels that way. And I, I hope that at least one of them, I, I like Alexis and I like Jeffra. I think that both of them could do some damage if they're in the right situation. I would love to see both of them do well. I think Alexis is the dark horse who could maybe slide through to the end and just charm the jury. Um, I don't really think any of them are going to make any major moves and change up the game, but I think Alex would be the dark horse for me to slide to the end somehow and sneak it away. What about Jeremiah? He's gone totally under the radar so far for us. Uh, does anybody have a strong feeling, good or bad, about Jeremiah? I think he's going to last a long time. and I know I've heard mm -hmm. others have said they think he's going to go fast, but I, think he's, I don't think he's going to win. I think he's going to maybe do as well as like a Reynolds where he gets through the early going with his athletic ability and then he gets to the merge and everybody's like he gets blindsided because he doesn't understand the game but I think he's going to last at least through the merge for sure yeah I think that I even wrote that I got Reynolds vibes off of Jeremiah and I was not a fan of Reynolds uh, before Caramoan started I think when we were all talking about uh, the cast of Caramoan everyone seemed to really love Reynolds and I just was not not Sarah, I, loved yeah. Sarah I loved Reynolds. I loved Reynolds. You loved Reynolds. And I, I do not get Reynolds vibes off Jeremiah. I, I, yeah. I get I get what I'm trying to say is I get those same vibes that I got from Reynolds before the game started. Having said that, as the game of Caramon progressed, I really liked Reynolds a whole lot more than I did at the start of the game. So I'm willing to be convinced by Jeremiah, but I'm still just kind of getting that same vibe that I got from Reynolds before the game started. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Let's move on to the Brains Tribe. Let's give Dan a shot here to tell us uh, how you think things are going to go down with this uh, very sneaky, very smart Brains Tribe. This is a really tricky one because you look at somebody like Garrett and you think he's made for the game. But I get a sense that people like like Spencer and, a few, and the two girls and... They're going to team up, and I think Garrett gets blindsided early in the game. And I think that changes it up. But the question is, if they all, they're going to cannibalize each other, is anybody going to get that far? Because they're all going to want to come in and just tear it up. But I don't know. I, everyone thinks Garrett has a good chance of winning. I think he could be out four or five episodes in. And that could really just make it interesting to see if somebody, you know, like Spencer or like David is able to kind of take control from there. But also Jatia could have a lot to say too, if she's a brain as we think. I want to hear each of you guys. Uh, give me Garrett, Spencer, David uh, in order of finish. Start with best, best, uh, middle, worst, okay? So what, what, did you, what did you say, Dan? You said... I would go um, best is David, then Spencer, and then Garrett. Okay, one, two, three, David, Spencer, Garrett. Josh? Garrett, David, Spencer. Garrett, David, Spencer is the worst. Yeah. Uh, Scott? Garrett, uh, first place. I picked him you know, to win the game, so I picked Garrett. Then David, Like even though the guy built the worst on the baseball stadium in the history of the world, it looks like something out of Beetlejuice's dream in the movie, you know, like a Ferris wheel, like it's it's just god awful, and he's a horrible guy. But I think he'll do better than Spencer. So I have right, Dave, Garrett, David, Spencer, and Sarah. Uh, Spencer, David, Garrett, I'm with Dan. Garrett's going to get an, a shock early blindside. It's going to be the Spencer, Mac. Spencer, David, look. Garrett. Um, I think I go Spencer, Garrett, David. I think I'm I think I'm the only one with that with that formula. Yeah. I think Spencer 
seems kind of like the weakest, and so like I feel like he's going to be just kind of like a red shirt on that team and just out first. No, I think he's so much younger than the rest of them, they're going to overlook him. They're going to be, because they're the brains, they're going to be targeting the threats. This is going to be like the men's tribe from one world all over again. I think there is something to be said for the fact that all those people are going to hit that beach and like it's, they find out that it's brains versus brawn versus beauty and Garrett is on the brains tribe. And I think everyone's going to look at that you know, chiseled specimen of a man <laughs> and be like, holy shit, he's got something working upstairs as well? That guy is trouble. So I, I agree that there might be some trouble uh, for Garrett on that department. He's going to have to figure out how to kind of uh, play it down a little bit. And in this, the way that the, the season is broken up thematically, it's going to be hard to play that down. All right, let's take a question here. This is from Gambling Station. Wants to know, where is the David love? He's the only smart one uh, that... Uh, he's the only smart one... I think uh, he is the best thing since baby Jesus. Okay, where where is it? No, no baby Jesus love for David? Clearly uh, she's not a sports fan, I'll say, that, that person. <laughs> well, he ran an Iron Man. He kind of he gives me Iron Man vibes to begin with, Tony Stark style. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I like David. I just, I, I think that, um, I don't know, he just seems like such an obvious schemer to me. Uh, yeah. I would, I would be really, oh. really wary of playing with him. Uh, I would just feel like there's something going on there. Um, but if he, but then again, he, you know, he's playing with Garrett, who I get that same read from, and he's playing with Spencer, I get that same read from. So I don't know. I, I think that it could play either way. It's going to be very interesting. It's going to be very interesting to see exactly how how it all plays out. We've spent so much time talking about the men in all of the previews we've done, but I feel like we've done a disservice to the brains women so yeah. far. So, of the three brains women, who do we think is going to go the furthest into the game? Latasha. Tasha. Yeah, just because she's, um, I mean, she's got all the brains of Beauty and the Brawn, but she doesn't stand out so much in any one of them, so I think she's the one who's going to be able to fly under the radar. Plus, she seems just generally withered enough that she can make that work for her. So, yeah, I would say Latasha's going to go the furthest. She's not going to win, but she's going to go the furthest. I agree. I think that she seems like the most like easygoing out of all of the girls on that tribe. Yeah, the big question is with Jatia and whether or not she's going to, because she could totally do great, or she like you know there's hints that she might not deal so well with other people, or she might get a little overwhelmed. But Tasha is so nice. If they can win some challenges too, that's a big thing. I think that um, she's so friendly, she can make plenty of friendships on the other tribe. I feel good about Tasha. I do too. Uh, I'd like I, Cass I, to I have nothing to add. I think Tasha's great. All right, let's talk about your girl Cass, Sarah. Yes, um, I love Cass. We've talked, we've talked a, a lot about Cass. I think she's going to be fun, but I think she's out early. Corinne did her <laughs> preview. Uh, she said she feels like uh, Cass is no fun. She's boring, and she wins what will be the worst season ever. So where, where do you guys land on Cass? Is she a contender, or is she going to be an early boot? I'm afraid she's going to be an early boot, but my fingers are crossed that she's going to manage to duck through that and go far, because I think she's going to be entertaining. Early boot. I think she's the standard old uh, person who the tribe loses early on in the game. And she's the one to go. Yeah, but brains aren't going to vote out the weak link. They're going to go, no, we're going to go for the threat because we came here to play Survivor. And they're going to implode and it's going to be a nightmare. But <laughs> I, I don't think they're going to vote out Cass because she's weak. So, I, Sarah, Sarah, who do you think is the, is the first out on the brains? Garrett. You think Garrett's first? Yeah, I think they're going to go a bit crazy and say, hey, let's get rid of this guy. Um, that would that would be so fun. Um, I mean, I, I would I would yeah. feel bad that we lost Garrett that quick, but that would be so much but fun. In the history of the six-person tribe, I mean, if we it's only happened what uh, two times, right? Where we have a tri uh, tribes of three in in yeah. the All Stars, and and then again in Survivor uh, Philippines. I mean, take a look at the people that got voted out on the All Stars. Uh, the people who were physical assets to their team did not get voted out. I mean, in the All Stars, it was Tina, and then it was Rudy, and it was somebody else, and and uh, people that were not necessarily the athletes on their tribes. 
and yeah. then go back and look at the Philippines then. And who got voted out? It was Zane, it was Roxy, it was Angie and her cookies. And then it wasn't until the fourth person that Russell Swan got voted out of his tribe. So do you really think a tribe of six could potentially vote out a guy like Garrett that early? I think that you you have to consider the fact that All Stars was a very different situation. It was people who knew each other, people who had seen each other play before, and they were going after proven threats. Uh, and in exactly. Philippines, in Philippines, it wasn't divided up based on categories. It wasn't divided up. You're the smart people. You're the strong people. You're the really sexy people. It wasn't divided up like that. And I think that that delineation, if it plays out in any way, I think it will play out in that way of well, we've got to live up to our name and we've got to start hitting the ground running and starting to play this this certain way. Um, and I I hadn't really thought about Garrett being the first one out until you said it, Sarah, but. That would be a wild thing to do, and I think it's something that could happen on this season. I don't think it would have happened on an earlier season necessarily, but I think on this one, it's possible. You know, to build on your point, Josh, um, about what you're saying about how the tribes, uh, when they tell them what they are, will that affect how they play? Um, that I was reading, the, the book that I'm reading right now, they talked about there was a study that was done where they did it like a, they had like these, uh, control and uh, some classrooms that they did this experiment on and so they had one classroom where they told the ki where they told the kids that oh this class was awarded you guys are the neatest classroom in the entire school right. and there was a control group and then there was another one where they told them like oh you guys are really messy we got to clean this classroom all the time and the class that they told was messy were, were continued to be more and more messy and the classroom that they told oh you're the cleanest classroom in the whole school uh, they, they kept the classroom cleaner than any other classroom so I think that's really interesting to think how will the tribes play based on what they are told their tribe is about I think that there's potential for that to play a lot more uh, profoundly than, than maybe some people have given it credit for I think that that psychological impact could be strong yeah, that's yeah. what I'm really looking forward to seeing this season, how they, how they react to that. Yeah, Probes mentioned that in like the first story when they announced the the twist of Brain's Brawn Beauty. He said, you know, he's like, well, it was interesting to see how they all did it. Now, he talked more about beauty and about taking care of their hair because he's Probes. But I think that um, it's going to play a role because Cass looks like the obvious first boot. But if she can survive, if they do okay in challenge and she survives, she may be around way into it. But she's either first out or probably five or six, fifth or sixth or further in. So I, in I agree a hundred percent. She needs if she can last ten days, she'll be there thirty five days. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How how quickly do you think she tells them she's a lawyer? Because that's not her plan going into the game. But I feel like once they're divided, brain brawn beauty, she's got to say what she's what what she does for a living, right? There's nowhere to hide. Yeah. It's the same for Garrick, because I think he was saying he was going to lie about it, but he's going to find something to tell them that he's, you know, explain why he's there. He's a rocket um, scientist. <laughs> yeah. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> they always do great on Survivor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, okay, who is going to go the furthest on the brain stride from everybody? Garrett. Right. Yeah, okay, so we know <laughs> Scott loves Garrett. Sarah, who do you like from this group? Uh... I I, I like Cass, but I'm, I'm sticking with Latasha. I think she's going to get the furthest, but I think they're all going to be gone before the final episode. Tasha. Josh? I'll go with Tasha. Tasha? Dan? I think David. I don't like him that much, but I could see him all of a sudden you get to the top six and he's the last brain left. This, this is pretty wide open. I feel like we kind of, we feel like we for the most part we know how the brains uh, the brawn tribe is going to go. We feel like we know how the beauty tribe is going to go, uh, or at least shake out in the end. This is the tribe that I think is going to yeah. ultimately determine the game, and I feel like it's probably not going to work out. I don't think they're going to be able to work together. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I what, can't what figure out the answers. You said in a in another podcast, I think that this is the tribe where the game is on right away. Yeah, they get there. Like, I feel like in the Brawn Tribe, they make an alliance of four or five off the bat, and they stick to that pretty far into the game. And I feel like that they are able to avoid Tribal, whereas I think Beauty goes to Tribal a lot, and I think Brains goes to Tribal Council, like, you know, maybe two times before the merge. Yeah. So that's going to be uh, very interesting to see. All right, 
let's uh, let's pick up the pace a little bit. Let's go to uh, a question that I like to ask before a season of new pit players. Who is the most likely player on this season to play again? We haven't seen these people uh, play once, but let's talk about who is the most likely to come back and play again. Let's start with you, Dan, this time. Uh, which player is most likely to come back for a second time? I'm going to go with Spencer, because I think he's going to make waves, even if he gets to, like, 10th or 9th. It'll be kind of like Cochran. I hate to make it obvious, obvious comparison, but I think he's going to be good TV. Jeff Probst seems to hate Spencer's guts also. <laughs> that sometimes brings people back. Look at Colton. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I and I think I would say Spencer as well. That would be my answer. All right, Josh. Oh, it's tough. You know, if if Tony does well, I could see Tony coming in in kind of like a Brad Culper, Culpepper-ish way. Um, I could see Spencer. I could see David. Um I could see Bryce. I hope it's Bryce. So I'm going to I'm going to put my vote for Bryce. Bryce, okay. Yeah. Scott. I'm going to say nobody. I'm going to say nobody back, I know, yeah. Guatemala too. <laughs> Bombshell, yeah, no. I don't think like anyone so far, I don't see like a real standalone um, character yet, or a standout, I should say. At this Sarah, time. did you say Guatema Guatemala? -y? Guatemala too. Yeah. Is it Guatemala yeah. that no one's returned from, isn't it? If it was like Mortal yeah. Kombat, I would call it a Guatemalady. Yeah, I could, I could <laughs> see it being a situation where, uh, where, where none of these people come back. I, I hear what you're, what you're saying, Scott. That I, I don't necessarily get huge star read from any of them. I think they're a really strong cast, actually. I, I, I could see quite a few of them coming back. But... Totally, absolutely, and I'm not saying that's not the case. Uh, you know, I love Guatemala. Which is it, Guatemala Josh? Are they coming back or not? <laughs> but I don't know. Uh, Sarah. Uh, I'll go with Alexis just because. Alexis. They, well, they always like to bring back this random cute girl who didn't, who did, who went far in her season, didn't really make a splash other than be cute. And Alexis is the manic pixie dream girl of the season, so I will say Alexis. Okay. All right. That's a uh, very, very, very interesting. Um, by the way, I didn't get this out at the top of the show, and I meant to. That I don't know if you guys saw this week, but uh, we tweeted out a link to a uh, site called uh, Fantasizer, uh, and no, not like that. Uh, F A N T A S I Z R. There's no uh, no E. But basically, we were contacted by a site that does uh, unique fantasy drafts. And so uh, they came up with a way. They wanted to do a fantasy draft for Survivor. And so they worked with us and Taylor Cotter. Uh, she came up with a scoring system uh, that we're going to monitor through uh, Rob as a podcast. So if you want to play in a fantasy draft and draft a Survivor fantasy team uh, with your friends, ideally a league is like four to six people, you can set that up and draft a team uh, by the end of the season. I'll put a link up, or I'm sorry, before the start of the season, I'll put that link up in the show notes uh, for this page if you want to play in the free Survivor Fantasy League that we're uh, putting on through with a Rob as a Podcast scoring system. So that's going to be a, a fun way to do what Josh and his friends did uh, in New Orleans uh, at the start of the last season. Yeah. yeah. Uh, probably with less beer, but yes. yeah. That, and oh, the, we can add the beer. Yeah, and the draft is cool. It goes over email. So you sign up with like four to six people, and then it basically emails you when it's your pick, and you don't have to all be there at the same time. So it's a cool way to do a uh, survivor draft with your friends. Okay, um, let's go into the true and false round, which I always like to do on the blogger roundtable. You guys ready for this? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay, let's go. Uh, we'll, we'll start with Sarah, okay? Okay. All right, Sarah, here we go. Uh, true, basically I'm going to ask each of you guys a true or false question, and then uh, we can find out if anybody disagrees, okay? So, Sarah, true or false, uh, the only tribe that ends up working together come the merge are the brains. False. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> no question. Uh, who is the tribe that works together at the merge? Braun. Braun. Yeah, I agree with that. Yep. I agree with that. Anybody disagree? If they survive, if enough of them survive, beauty, I think, might do it. But the question is, will they have more than, like, two people? <laughs> That's the question. It's yeah. big. You know, and also, we saw on Survivor Philippines that not just... Sometimes you have the numbers, and it's a bad thing. Look at what happened to... Uh, was it Tan Dang? Yep. Well, I could see Braun pulling a tan dang and not going to tribal council, but I could see them actually working together. I think they might have this happy family mentality because they don't have any 
people, I mean, Abby Maria RC and Pete were all like, oh, I'm going to play the game, I'm going to lie to everybody, and, you know, it, that was the problem. But I, Braun doesn't really have any of those people, so you know, I think... In hindsight, uh, this tribe of Abby Maria, RC, Lisa Welchel, Mike Scoopin, Artis, and Pete, was this the most <laughs> dysfunctional tribe of all time? <laughs> It's a, it's, a, it's a great tribe, but not um, for the reasons they would have wanted to be great. I mean, this tribe is a train wreck. <laughs> <laughs> like they were, and they didn't lose a challenge. They, were, they came together when the challenges, and they had pe every single person uh, in that tribe hate somebody else from the tribe. <laughs> yeah. Like to the point, like they don't even talk to one another. Yeah, real world survivor. To this day. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's great. All right. Scott, here's my true or false question for you. Yeah. True or false, we will see no showmance this season on Survivor. I'm going to say that is, um, let's go with false. I think false. The, I think the beauty tribe, I think like my girl Morgan, uh, maybe Morgan and LJ have a little Hallmark Channel uh, type of like relationship. Ew. He's too old. It's a 13 year age gap. It's disgusting. So, wait, hold on. Mor Morgan and who is the guy? I said, uh, I said LJ. And Morgan and LJ. Morgan. There you go. Yeah. Boom. <laughs> Dis agree or disagree, panel? Um, I think that we'll see a showmance. I think it will be uh, Spencer and his ego is the, is the likeliest <laughs> thing. Would be, yeah. would be my bet. No, I, I could see the Jeremiah Jeffer thing. I think that's pretty easy. That's where I yeah. am. Yeah, again, there's a huge age gap there. I just, uh... but yeah, I, I could see that one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's go to Josh. Okay, Josh, your question: True okay. or false? Uncle Cliffy will last longer than fellow athlete Jeff Kent. True or false? False. False. Is it How close? How far did Jeff Kent get? I um, think he was the second person on the jury. Yeah, he was after RC. No, I don't think he gets that far. I would like him to. Uh, I think that he gets slightly further than Jimmy Johnson, but not much further. I yeah, I think he's gonna get farther actually, like than Jeff Kent. I'm gonna I'm gonna say he makes it to at least halfway. Uh, like I don't know, I don't know what place that would be, but I think he makes it into the middle of the jury. Okay. All right, true or false, Dan? This one's for you. Uh, true or false, one tribe won't go to tribal council until the merge. I'm going to say false. I know you could say that the Braun tribe, but I kind of already threw out that I thought they're going to lose early. So I'm thinking false because I think it's going to be more varied than we would think. And they're probably only going to do the the way it's set up for like four episodes. So I think I think they all go at least once. Agree or disagree? I mean, I think it all depends on the competitions. I mean, it seems like you need to have a PhD and on um, the puzzles. So if they like maybe um, throw in, you know, ski ball or swimming or so just something other than a puzzle, then yeah, I think that uh, I'll it'll agree. be more spread out. I, I agree. Wish I'm hoping so. Anyway, I, I don't really like when one tribe just gets panned and another's fine, but. Yeah, I think that's going to be the, the best way to keep this, this season interesting is if everybody gets to lose somebody early uh, mm -hmm. and, and everybody kind of feels a little bit of, of, of freedom to, uh, to start working with other people from other tribes. I, I feel like if there's one tribe that's really dominant, it's going to be a little bit harder. So uh, I, I, hope, I hope they all make it to council at some point. Okay. Yeah. Sarah, back to you, okay? True yeah. or false? Uh, the superpower of Tyler Perry immunity idol will not be used this season. True or false? Uh, I will say true. It's going to be a non-event. Well, it's it's going to be an event in that the person's just there for, you know, it's inertia. That's what it's going to be. Force Agree of inertia. Agree or disagree? Yeah, I think it's going to be a Yule Kwan Idol. Uh, I hope I'm wrong, but I think it's just going to be a Yule Kwan Idol, and I think it's going to be a very silly decision uh, on production's part. Yeah, because I kind of feel like once you have it, I think the move is to say, hey, just so I you have guys it. know, yeah. I have this, and if you vote for me, I will play it. <laughs> you, like, Boy, that's a, that's a, you made a strong case, Rob. We will not vote for you. 
You have, yeah. you have nothing to lose and everything to gain by telling everybody that you have it at that point because yeah. you, you won't get voted for. If you do get voted for, you can protect yourself. But if you don't get voted for, you get to say to everybody, well, you didn't vote for me. You could have. I had this. Uh, so I, I agree with that. I think the qualification I'd make is if you're able to hand it off to somebody else at tribal council. If you are allowed to do that, then yes, it will get played because it would only make sense. But if they're not letting them just do that, then no, it won't get played. All right, Scott, back to you. True or false, at some point this season, Rob will get a complaint from one of the survivors about something that one of you wrote. True or false? <laughs> uh, I would hope it would be true, but I'm going to guess that is a big false. I mean, has that happened I'm before sure that ever? Happened. Oh, that's yeah. happened. That has happened. <laughs> really? That has, that has happened, yes. Yes. Does um, it have to be a survivor on the current season? <laughs> yeah, uh, it has to be on the current season, yes. Okay. Yes. Will, will you let me know if uh, Spencer complains about my Joffrey comparison? I will let I will let you know. I will let you, I, I will let you know. Yes. Because it's uncanny. For the record, this happened much more on Survivor Caramoan than it did uh, last season. Yes. And you stick up for us? Is it you know kind of like a Watergate thing? Like here's you, here's an example. Of, me, I'm, I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a role play of okay. Um, of of okay. So this is a Survivor on the other end. Of like uh, like uh, oh hey Rob, it's so and so. Like oh hey, how's it going? And like, oh, well, you know, I think that one of the bloggers on the here is uh, being a little unfair. I think they said this, and I really didn't. Like, oh, really? Uh, oh, yeah, they shouldn't, they shouldn't say that. Uh, uh, what, I, I will talk to that person, and I'll say, hey, take it easy, because that's, uh, that, you're, you're a good guy or a girl. And, um, uh, you know, that's, like, uh, we'll, I'll talk to them. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, I got to go. I got to okay. That's a role play how that how that conversation goes. Okay? Oh, that's lovely. That sounds fun. So, so yeah. that, where's the where's that? No, you they're entitled to say that. I think it was a fair comment. Now get lost. You don't say yeah. that at all, Rob. No, because they don't they don't have your phone number. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll give them my phone number. You can tell them to call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It um, depends who it is. If it's someone like Shamar, no, they're not having my phone number. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if Shamar ever read any of the blogs. Okay. That's true. Uh, all right, yeah, an I issue. <laughs> yes, uh, like Bob Costas. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> Josh, true or false? The final three uh, of this of this season will all be from the same original tribe. False. No, I don't think that. I don't think anybody will stick together that closely. First of all, and I think that somebody will squeak in there. I could see it being a two and one. Uh, I don't think it'll be an all three. Two and one. Anybody disagree? No, I'm I'm with you, especially with tribes of six. The odds of three getting through seems really low. Uh, just to just to mix things up, I'll say it's um, true. I, I'll I'll say my three young people from the Braun tribe will make up the final three. I'm gonna have Lindsay, Sarah, and Wu. Woo! Lindsay's Woo! not making the final three. So <laughs> um, all right, and finally, uh, Dan, for you. True or false, Survivor uh, Kugayun uh, will be considered a better season than Survivor Blood vs. Water. Oh, I hope so, but I'm going to say false. I don't know. I've had high hopes for the last no returnee seasons, and they let me down. And this has potential. I like the cast, but I'm going to say I think it's going to be false. False. Anybody disagree? It's a high bar. High, it's a high bar. Yeah. I set the bar yeah. high. Yeah. It's a high bar. I think it'll be better than One World. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. It's and I, I actually like One World, but I think that it'll be better than One World. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that is uh, our Survivor Roundtable preview here with the bloggers. Here, let me, uh, let me put this up that Scott St. Pierre worked on. So uh, Scott St. Pierre has worked Ooh. out the schedule of when you can see all of these people uh, and read what they have to say. So here's how this is going to go. The Survivor blogger schedule. Uh, we're going to uh, we're going to kick it off then on Friday uh, with Scott Gallagher. Then on Saturday, I'm giving you through the Survivor week. Uh, then we will have uh, uh, Michael Trudeau on Saturday. On Sundays, uh, you will hear from Dan. 
Uh, then on Monday, you will have a blog from Nick. And on uh, then Sarah's blog will come out on Wednesday, the day of the show. Is that right? Tuesday. Tuesday. Sarah, Tuesday. Okay. And then Wednesday, okay. then Wednesday, you'll hear from me and Stephen Fishback on Survivor Know-It-Alls. And we will have a live Survivor Know-It-Alls will be back 10.15 p.m. Eastern on Wednesday night after a two-hour premiere of Survivor Kugayun. And we will have uh, then on Thursday morning, you will hear from not one, but the first two people that are voted out of the tribe. No Redemption Island, baby. You'll see two people voted out on hey. Wednesday, and you will hear from two people on Thursday morning. So I've got two exit interviews scheduled then for Thursday morning. And it seems like, from what I understand, it's going to be two full exit interviews. So oh, that's good. Yeah. So so that should be good, and I think it's good. It softens the blow for the first person kicked off because they get to have a uh, a buddy also. I just feel worse for the second person kicked off. <laughs> yeah, they have to share. They thought they, thought they were going to make it two weeks, and now they're only going to make it one. We're only going to make it one week on the show, so that's kind that's yeah. kind of lousy for them. Okay, so uh, that's basically what we're going to do uh, for Survivor, and then also I got word uh, today that we will be doing exit press for The Amazing Race as well this Yay. season. So uh, nice. we will be talking to the first team kicked off The Amazing Race on Monday as well. Did I forget anything, guys? Don't no, think so. I think it's covered. Let's, take a, let's take a comment. From Phil the Issues Guy, he wants to know, will the, this Brains tribe outthink and outplan themselves out of the game too? Do they have too many cooks? Yeah, I think we've pretty much, uh, yeah. we're all in agreement on that. Too many cooks. Mm -hmm. Uh. So then, as well, we are going to uh, have, on Monday, it is going to be the reveal of Miss and Mr. Survivor. Do you guys, really quick, on the roundtable, do you want to give your endorsement for Miss and Mr. Survivor? Also, Sarah, I know you must have an endorsement. Uh, I'm sorry, the pageant culture just goes over my head. I'm British. I'm endorsing John Cody for something, though, because <laughs> I saw that prank from Candace, and yeah, he, he, he needs some help. He needs something for that. <laughs> okay. Well, so you, are you saying to vote for Candace because she's the closest thing to having uh, John Cody on the ballot? Uh, I suppose so. Or f free John Cody or something. <laughs> I like Candace, though. <laughs> yeah. Sarah, you don't have a Mr. Survivor endorsement? No, well, you know, everyone knows I like Reynold the best, so he's not there. So. <laughs> Reynold <Right, right. laughs> doesn't even make the top three. I know. What kind of what kind of show are you running here, Rob? <laughs> All right. Uh, let me go to somebody who will give me some answers. Scott, yeah. who, who are you endorsing for Miss Survivor? I'm going to do a write-in vote, and I'm going to write it in Morgan. Thank you. Morgan, okay. <laughs> well, you're, you're ahead. Ineligible. <laughs> yeah. Josh, who, who you got? It shouldn't be a surprise. She's on my zombie survival team. Uh, Candace makes the cut, you know. And plus, you get two doctors out of the deal, John Cody. Uh, and I'll I'll also throw my support behind um, Mister's Survivor, uh, Aris and Vetus. Okay. All right. So he likes the uh, Bushkowskis brothers. Yeah. Dan, do you, do you have an endorsement for Miss and Mister Survivor? Well, for Miss Survivor, I would say Andrea, who I've been behind. It's the beginning, so um, oh. and then that's <laughs> poor choice of words there. Woo. Um, <laughs> woo. And woo. Mr. Survivor, I'm not sure I like the two the having two, but I have to have to vote for Otis. He was my okay. pick to win last season. Let me down. A A. He goes Otis Andrea. All right. Well, we will. There's you have one more day to vote. Tw about 24 more hours to vote for Miss Survivor and Mr. Survivor. Uh, you can vote on my website or go to misssurvivor.com or Mr. Survivor spelled out as well. And then Monday night we will have the results of the Miss and Mr. Survivor pageant. Uh, we'll be joined by the tabulator himself, Kurt Clark. Uh, the original Miss Survivor, Poverty Shallow. They'll all be here 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. And then on Tuesday. Uh, we will have our first Amazing Race live recap of the season, and we'll be joined by Amazing Race royalty. Team Guido from Season 1 are going to be with us and uh, talking with Jessica and I about all of the things that happened in the premiere of Amazing Race All-Stars, taking us all the way into the premiere of Survivor Kugayun. How do you like that? I love that. Yeah. Is that how we're pronouncing it now? I, I, th I looked it up on Wikipedia. I think that's how you say it. It's not Kugayun? Yeah, it's not Kagayan. It's not Kagayan. I oh, believe I like it's Kagayan. The, Kagayan. The, the song. Kagayan. <laughs> I think that's how you, that's how you okay. say it. But we'll see. 
people will correct me no matter what. Okay? And uh, I think that is going to about do it for this. Uh, if you want to make sure you don't miss any of the fun in the next couple of days, subscribe to this podcast on YouTube. You can subscribe to the video channel by clicking the subscribe button or go to robiswebsite.com slash YouTube or by going to, uh, you can cl click on the podcast page on robhasawebsite.com to get all the ways to subscribe to Rob Has a Podcast, okay? Yes. All right, everybody. Yep. Have a great night. Have a great weekend. And then when we come back, it is going to be time for Survivor next week. So very exciting Yay. week. It was Woo! a long off season, Woo! but boy, I'm exhausted Woo! already. You look tired, actually, Rob. <laughs> A little, a little tired. I probably only did about like 15 podcasts this week. Yeah. Um, but good. I hope everybody's enjoying the shows and uh, hope everybody has a, has a great weekend and really appreciate you guys coming out tonight. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you, Rob. All right. Thank Take care, you. everybody. Have a great night. Bye. Bye.